well, as you can see it is just come on to 38 past in most places, 8 past in other places. Depends where you are as to what the time is right now. But where I live in on the east coast of Australia, it's 9.38 right now on Saturday, February 24, 2018. And it's 13 days away from Friday, the 9th of March. And one of the boys who has made the prophecy for Friday, the 9th of March, lives in Minnesota, so I might go over to Minneapolis. Or actually, one of the other boys, Nathan Breeze, is from Melbourne. Nathan's the one who's 13. There's the time right now in Minnesota. It's 4.38 a.m. on Saturday, 24th of February, 2018. Might go back to the main list of times, and yeah, if I click on, for example, Melbourne, I might go to Melbourne because that's where that's pretty close to where Nathan lived, and it'll be the same time there as as where I am. Nine thirty-nine, and thirty-nine is the value of angel. And Nathan and Jacob are angels. 39 is 13 times 3. So 939, we are 13 days away from Friday the 9th of March. And yes, should be the same. It is. So yeah, 13 days away from Friday the 9th of March. 40 is the value of pain. It's also the value of the name Linda. And Jacob had a pet dog named Marcus. Oi, OY equals 40. And 40 is the value of OY. 15 and 25 is 40. The 15th and the 25th letter of the alphabet, OY. The name of the Billy Bumbler in the Dark Tower. Like a dog crossed with a raccoon. So that's, I guess, Jake West. Jake Westling had a dog named Marcus. Jake Chambers, also 11 years old in the Dark Tower, had a Billy Bumbler named Oi. Kind of like a pet dog. Key equals 41. In the Dark Tower, they talk about the Keystone date. And Jake is of the Quartet of 90 and 9. So, yeah. I think now I'll go to... I might quickly go to the weather chart, the bomb. And just see what... There, you can still see the storm that came through where I live tonight. It's now heading out to the sea. And it was quite a decent storm. Lightning, thunder, rain. Like I said, today is 13 days before Friday, the 9th of March, 2018. So I thought we might have a little look at the news and what's happening in the news tonight. Given that. I've told you the time and the date, and it's 13 days, actually I should show you this too, just puts it in writing, today is Saturday, the 24th of February 2018, Nathan Breeze died on a Saturday, age 13, he died on um, the 7th of February 2009. He was born on the 24th, he died on a Saturday, and he died age 13. And we are 13 days away from Friday the 9th of March, which is the date that Nathan and Jacob have made a prophecy for. Of course, Jacob was 11, so 13 plus 11, Nathan's age plus 
Jacob's age gives you 24, which is Nathan's date of birth. Nathan was born on Friday, the 24th of November, 1995. So, boy, Mockets, Jake's dog, and the Billy Bumble in the dark tap. So let's have a look at the news headlines from this date today. And you can see this is the news at 8.30 p.m. Queensland time, which is not the same as the time where I am. Where I am, it's an hour, hour later, because we have, our, yeah, daylight saving. The top stories tonight, the woman behind sexual harassment claims against Barnaby Joyce says she wants people to be held accountable for their actions. The outgoing Deputy Prime Minister denies the allegations. Two people are dead after their yacht capsized off the coast of Western Australia. The vessel was taking part in the Bunbury and Return Ocean Race when it overturned off Mandura. Officials say at least 29 people have been killed in four attacks across Afghanistan. Tomorrow's weather, wet and stormy across the east, cooler in the south, a few storms on the west coast. The UN Security Council has delayed a vote on a 30-day ceasefire in Syria while one of the fiercest air assaults of the seven-year war continues. There are concerns that without a ceasefire, there will be no way to get medical supplies to the devastated region. It's known as the double tap, a deliberate heartless exercise. The dust from the first bomb had barely settled before the second one landed. Children panic to cry out for their father. But there's no time to wait, no time to look. Only time to run and try and stay alive. With the intensity of the recent bombing, most spend their time underground in makeshift shelters. It's disgusting, suffocating. Children get sick, but the hospitals are all getting bombed. Childhood is not even a reflection of what it should be. And yet these kids' giggles reverberate almost surreally. Through tunnels carved out in the ground. Play games familiar to most of us, under circumstances we cannot even pretend to imagine. <laughs> we wish, we wish for aid, for help here in Huta. We're hungry. Let them understand this, this little girl pleads. In another reality, in what may as well be a world away. It's not that no one heard her cry, or any of the others. It's that once again, the powers that control Syria's fate betrayed it. This is Syria's story, one that is on a grisly repeat. A mother bids her son goodbye. She's already been through this. Say hi to your brother Talal, she tells his bloody corpse. Tell him you died the same way he did. The civil defense team posted this video to Twitter, begging people to try to put themselves in the shoes of the father whose son they are looking for. You hear sort of an anguished low cry and the question, is he alive? Miraculously, the child is. There are no words for this, or perhaps new ones will need to be created that can describe the magnitude of the death, despair, and heartbreak, and how we utterly failed Syria. The California parents accused of holding their 13 children captive in the family home have been hit with more charges. The couple are fighting accusations of abuse and extreme cruelty, which lasted for years. They're the mum and dad accused of neglect, starvation and violence on the children they should have been caring for. And today, as the prosecution builds a case to go to trial, David and Louise Turpin were hit with more allegations of cruelty. Three new charges on both defendants of child abuse and one new count against only defendant Louise Turpin of felony assault. The parents sat in Riverside Court wearing dark suits as their legal teams said they would fight the now more than 40 charges. Request to enter not guilty please and denials to all allegations. 
It was January 14 when their 17-year-old daughter escaped out a window of their home in Paris, south of Los Angeles. She told the police she and her 12 brothers and sisters, aged 2 to 29, were being held captive, abused, starved, even chained up by their parents, alleged mistreatment, which had been going on for years. These fresh charges slapped on David and Louise Turpin are the result of a meticulous police investigation, which includes hours of interviews with the children, their diaries, as well as significant physical evidence found inside the home. The younger children have been split between foster homes. The older adult age siblings are being cared for in a specially modified area of a local medical centre, where they've been given iPads, toothbrushes for the first time. They're learning how to make decisions on their own. The parents, who sat just metres apart, didn't try to communicate with each other at all today. They'll be back in court next month. Police have arrested an alleged firebug who started three grass fires along Christie Creek in South Australia last night. Young families and residents were ready to evacuate their homes, fearing they could go up in flames. Residents couldn't believe it when three fires erupted in scrubland along Christie Creek last night. A fire down across the road, like directly across the road, another one a little further and then a bigger one even further down. That one down there was getting a bit out of hand. You can see the flames coming up pretty bad. Residents in a group of flats nearby were ready to evacuate. One which behind us was really um, getting a bit um, concerning for us and so I went around and woke up the neighbours because I thought that we were in danger. Firefighters quickly extinguished the three blazes, the biggest burned through about 100 square metres of scrub. Police saw a suspect running from the area. They were able to track him down to a nearby house where he was arrested. The 21-year-old has been charged with three counts of arson and one count of causing a bushfire. That's incredible. Yeah, it's good to hear and just glad that the fire brigade were there for us to keep us safe. We're across the road. You're putting us in danger, our son, our animals, so, you know, the people next to us. From May, Victorian children under the age of five will receive a free... So what it said back there, but those kids, the 13 children that were kept imprisoned for all those years by their parents. Did you know that some of those kids were able to recite the entire Bible? So when I talk about my prediction, actually being the prediction of Jacob and Nathan, and being a prediction against religious hypocrisy, I'm really not joking. There is a dark, evil side to religion, and sometimes it manifests in it manifests in all kinds of ways. But what's happening? What happened to these kids being imprisoned by parents who made them recite, learn how to recite the entire Bible, the entire Bible? I think that kind of goes hand in hand with what's happening in Syria right now to the kids in Syria, the, the bombing that they've just decided to continue, not even have a ceasefire, not even allow any respite for the victims there. It sort of reminds me of what happened in Myanmar recently, six months ago now, seven, eight months ago. Just mass killings which have largely been ignored by the rest of the world. Australia's government hasn't even condemned the Myanmar military for what it did to over 6,000 people murdered, little kids thrown into fires to burn to death. I don't know what's going to happen on Friday 9th of March, but yeah, I think there's, there's something very wrong with the world today. I really do. You can't do this sort of stuff. You just can't keep doing this. Syria, this has been going on for too long. And to do this to little kids, and to turn your back on victims like that, then to stand up and pretend that you care about dictatorships, 
that abuse their own people as you, you know, move towards war with North Korea. No, I just don't believe that your motives are good anymore. I'm sorry, but I don't.